All right, so NBA Media Day training camp, all of that is officially getting started. The preseason literally starts next week. That seems so crazy to say because it really does feel like just a couple of weeks ago, the season came to an end. That's how quick the off season came and went. I'm excited as a basketball fan. This is definitely going to be a very entertaining season barring injuries right like I always enter these seasons with like these high expectations talking about how excited everything is going to be or exciting everything is going to be then injuries end up hitting I really hope not because right now the level of competition across the board is insane there are so many really really good teams in both conferences that put in a lot of work this offseason to bolster their rosters there was one team in particular that didn't do a ton this offseason that I was kind of reading about and thinking about today Day, and that are the Minnesota Timberwolves. They obviously had an amazing run last season, getting over to the Western Conference Finals, led by Anthony Edwards. They had the best defense in the entire league. Rudy Gobert was once again the defensive player of the year. Jaden McDaniel showed us his upside as potentially being one of the best future two-way players in the entire league. Just an amazing run. But my fear for this Timberwolves team is that they're not able to repeat that success. I talked about it, mentioned it very briefly. They didn't do a ton from a roster standpoint this offseason yes they did go out at the draft and had a very productive draft by getting rob dillingham and also terrence shannon i'm especially excited about terrence shannon because i think his playing style perfectly fits this timberwolves culture he's a great slasher great end-to-end -end transition guy and i think he has a ton of upside from a defensive perspective rob dillingham also being here he's going to be asked to do a ton as a shot creator coming off the bench mike conley is obviously getting older he's not the same mike conley that he was in those utah jazz days where he was an all-star that he was in those memphis grizzlies days he's not the same guy so they're going to need more shot creating from that point guard position and rob dillingham is going to be thrust into that role and asked to do a lot of significant things within that role but those are rookies those are first year guys and I think they're going to be really good in their first seasons and they're going to do a lot and show a ton of potential but rarely did I think that rookies were going to like be the tipping point for a team that's trying to contend and so I did watch this team kind of stay a little bit stagnant in the offseason as far as making moves on the free agency market and on the trade market they actually lost Kyle Anderson who meant a lot for them from a defensive perspective and also brought some really good solidity offensively with kind of his weirder style and approach to the game but still brings a lot to the table from a two-way perspective they lost him to the Warriors so now your question right now now for this Timberwolves team is can they still contend while we saw the rest of the Western Conference get significantly better if you look at the Dallas Mavericks for example they add Klay Thompson who is simply one of the best shooters of all time in my opinion the second or third best shooter of all time and on top of that they go out and get two really good role players in Quentin Grimes and Najee Marshall I've talked about this on my channel a lot before they bring so much to that Mavericks offense with their ability to attack closeouts which is going to open up that offense a lot more Clay Thompson's ability to move well without the ball is going to cause for less stagnation within that Mavericks offense Dallas got so much better this offseason or we talk about the Sacramento Kings they added one of the best players in the East conference and a clutch beast in DeMar DeRozan to pair alongside with another clutch beast in De'Aaron Fox and a guy who was top 10 in the MVP conversation last season in DeMontis Sabonis, right? And we saw a lot of other teams in the Western Conference make significant moves to just continue to get better on top of what they were last season. Talk about the Pelicans. They went and got DeJounte Murray to pair alongside with Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram. They're going to be a scary team if they're fully healthy. And with the Pelicans, that is a major if. But if those guys are on the court, they're going to be a threat. The Grizzlies are back in full fully healthy. I talked about this a lot as well. This Grizzly squad, when healthy, they have experience with playing in big playoff scenarios. They've added pieces since John Moran's suspension and injury situation. Now that he is back, they are right back in the mix. The Oklahoma City Thunder added Isaiah Hartenstein, who is one of the most underrated big men in the entire league, and also one of the best point of attack defensive players in the league in Alex Caruso. The West got better. We didn't see Minnesota do a ton in the offseason. So again, the question becomes, 
can Minnesota be better than what they were last season and build on top of that with how much better and deeper the Western Conference got? That's the biggest question. I really don't want the Timberwolves to kind of fall into that category that we saw the Atlanta Hawks fall into back in 2021. We all remember Atlanta makes this super deep playoff run. They make the Eastern Conference Finals. That was an amazing point in Trey Young's career because before that, in those first couple of years he was in the league, people had a lot of questions about him. People didn't think he was really effective as far as being an NBA player. Yeah, the numbers look great, but the question was, could he contribute to winning? Well, in that 21 playoff run, he led them to the conference finals and they were inches away from making the NBA finals. I think if he was healthy because he did end up getting hurt later on in that series, they could have potentially went to the finals and who knows what could have happened from there, right? Phoenix wasn't outmatching the Atlanta Hawks in a final series. So if things went well and injuries didn't hit, there was a strong possibility that Trey Young is an NBA champion at this point in his career. But sadly for the Hawks, they were not able to repeat that success. I don't know what to pinpoint as the reason for them not being able to repeat that success, but since making that deep run in 2021 and being a team that was very promising for the future at that point in time, they have been on a consistent decline despite getting new coaches, despite bolstering their roster by adding DeJounte Murray to pair along with Trey Young in the backcourt. They declined. I don't want the Timberwolves to fall into that same category, right? Let's look at another example here, the Sacramento Kings. In the 2022-23 season, they showed us this potential as a future elite Western Conference team. And they can still be in that conversation, but their follow-up to that 2023 season was a disappointing playing tournament appearance, right? Which was pretty underwhelming considering how great they were in the season before that, especially from an offensive standpoint. You don't want the Timberwolves to fall into that same category where they're showing us a ton of promise in the playoffs in one year and they come back and they're never able to truly repeat that postseason success. So Minnesota's elevation this season to me is going to come down to a couple of things and these are evolving actually around their best guys. For one, we need to continue to see Anthony Edwards emerge as an elite level all-around player. Yes, he is an amazing scoring threat. Yes, he is also a guy who's very willing to go out there and play defense at a high level. One thing Ant showed us last season is that he is willing to be one of the premier two-way guys in the league. Now, the sustainability of that is in question. We saw that in the series against the Mavericks where he tried to guard Kyrie and he ended up being gassed after game one. But still, Ant shows that willingness to be that guy. He needs to continue to round out and polish his offensive game, getting to his spots, also continuing to grow as a playmaker. If you watch him last year in the postseason, he showed a lot of upside as a guy who's good at finding other players and setting them up, and he can only continue to grow in that area. But getting to his spots, knowing where to consistently attack, and also growing as a playmaker and finding that perfect medium from a defensive perspective is going to be a key to getting the Timberwolves over the hump. You need your best player to continue to make those strides, especially if he's one of the best young prospects and young players in the entire league. And then there's Carl Anthony Towns. I was not happy with Cat's performance in the playoffs last season at all. Yes, he did show up at specific times, but there were too many times where he just was not effective for that team. The inconsistency on offense, the fouling, that's been too much of an issue with Cat throughout his career. You think at this point he'd have it figured out. The Timberwolves don't do anything if Carl Anthony Towns does not find some consistency on both ends. Period, point blank. We could talk about the stuff with Ant, and I think those things are going to be key. But Carl Anthony Towns is the X factor. He is their second best player. He is one of the most talented players in the entire league. He has just never put it together from a playoff standpoint. The Wolves get nowhere if they don't have an effective version of Cat. Cat's got to be on the court in the first place. That means not fouling and playing smart defense. And on offense, he has to be consistent. Flat out, no ifs, ands, or buts about that. They absolutely need that from Cat this season. If you're going to have a guy this talented on your roster who is an all-star, you need him to be out there, and he has to get better from a decision-making standpoint and just from a maturity standpoint. Fouling out every year in the playoffs at this point in your career, it's been about 10 years pretty much, cannot be a consistent thing at this point. So those are going to be the biggest things for the Timberwolves to focus on this season as they're looking to keep up with the rest of the Western Conference, which is extremely deep. Ants, 
continued success as an all-around player is going to be absolutely huge and Carl Anthony Towns maturity 10 years in from a defensive and offensive perspective those are the things that the Wolves have to focus in on in order for them to get back to that contention level that championship contention level that they sniffed last season that hopefully they don't lose this season with a deeper West.